Hello and welcome. This is the adult Sunday school lesson for the First Baptist Church, Alabaster. And I do need to say up front, last week I announced that we would not be, or that this would be our last session. Well, I spoke prematurely. Uh, we will continue this for the next uh, several weeks and reevaluate each week because uh, we had many, many more viewers <laughs> Uh, since I first said that uh, we would discontinue this. So it is still ministering to several people. Um, and so I apologize for uh, prematurely uh, saying we were going to stop this. But anyway, we will carry on. We'll be here next week as well. And this is the uh, Sunday School lesson for October the 25th. This is the Explore the Bible series. And our um, title is God Renews. We'll be looking at Isaiah chapter 40, and we'll be beginning at the 18th verse. I hope you have your copy of the Word of God and open it up to Isaiah chapter 40, and we'll begin reading at the 18th verse and conclude with the 31st verse. To whom then will you liken God, or what likeness compare with him? An idol? A craftsman casts it. A goldsmith overlays it with gold and casts it with silver chains. He who is too impoverished for an offering chooses wood that will not rot. He seeks out skillful craftsmen to uh, set, it, uh, set up an idol that will not move. Do you not know? Do you not hear? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out uh, the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to dwell in, who brings princes to nothing and makes the rulers of the earth as emptiness. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown. Scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows on them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, that I should be like him, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host by number, calling them all by name, by the greatness of his might, and because he is strong in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary. And young men shall fall exhausted, but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Now chapters 40 through 66 of Isaiah should be interpreted against the background of the Babylonian exile and the period immediately following the exile in the 6th century B.C. The God of judgment who had allowed his people to be carried into exile now comforts them with a message of comfort and hope. What do you think of when you hear the following words? Comfort of the Lord shall be revealed. Some most likely will, will be reminded of the opening tenor solos and the first chorus in Handel's Messiah, the oratorio that has been uh, a part of the celebration of Christmas all over the world. Isaiah 40 verse 1 reads like this, Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Why did the people need comforting? Well, first of all, they were in exile in Babylon and they were far away from their homeland. Consider this uh, historical background. The northern kingdom of Israel had fallen under 
uh, the onslaught of the Assyrian army in 722 B.C. More than a century later, about 609 B.C., the death of King Josiah marked the beginning of the end of Judah, the southern kingdom. But by this time, the Babylonians were well on their way towards succeeding the Assyrians as the dominant military power in the Middle East. Now in 601 BC, the Babylonian ruler Nebuchadnezzar captured Jerusalem and deported 8,000 of its leading citizens to Babylon. In 587 BC, he destroyed the city and carried thousands more into exile. A final deportation took place in 582 BC. Um, biblical historians call this the Babylonian captivity. But even the mighty Babylonian empire would eventually fall to the Persian ruler, Cyrus II, in 539 BC. Now this would pave the way for the return of the Jewish exiles to their native land. The, the words in Isaiah 40 were spoken by the prophet to the exiles in anticipation of that glorious day when God would use these events on the stage of history to take them back to their homeland. Now let's look at verses 18 through 20, and it's speaking, Isaiah is speaking about idols. Now in those days, it was commonly believed that the fate of a nation was determined by the power of their deities. Thus, many Jewish exiles had come to believe that, their, uh, that the gods of the Babylonians must be more powerful than Yahweh, the God of Israel. And that is why these verses the prophet is making fun of the idols of the Babylonians because they were crafted of silver, they were crafted of gold, and of wood. And then in verses 21 through 26, he paints a contrasting picture of the awesome power of the true God. Take note of the word create, if you will. It occurs 21 times, that one word create, 21 times in chapters 40 through 66 of the, in the book of Isaiah. Now this is almost twice as often as it occurs in Genesis to emphasize God's superiority over the various deities made uh, by man. The prophet Isaiah reiterates the profound truth with which the Bible begins, and that's in Genesis 1-1, where in the beginning God created. Now moving on to verses 21 through 28, the Israelites to whom these words are addressed have been prisoners so long that they might have lost their perspective, if you will, and are regarding their captors as all-powerful because they're under their rule. They need to be reminded that their God, Yahweh, is the ultimate power that controls not only their destinies as a people, but in fact, God controls the destiny of the entire world and all its peoples. And if when we need to really go further because it controls the destiny of the whole universe. So they are reminded of what they have known from the earliest years, that Yahweh is above the earth and all its inhabitants in verse 22. He is above the world's rulers, just as he is sovereign over all the estimated 8.7 million different species of animals. He created all of this. The people are also being reminded that God is everlasting. There is no beginning. There was, is no end. God is creator. And God does not faint and does not get weary. And God's wisdom is infinitely greater than all. There is no knowledge that God did not place. The question posed by the Lord, to whom will you compare me? In verse 25, actually has no answer because he is incomparable. 
unlike anyone or anything else. The people of Israel needed to learn that the gods of Assyria, the gods of Babylon and Egypt for that matter, couldn't be compared to God, the Creator. Though we today may not face the same temptation as the people of Israel, we must know that comparing God to anything that is important to people still borders on idolatry. Today, we have money, power, pleasure, or prominence. All of these can be compared to what uh, God is for others. In other words, someone's possessions or wealth becomes their God, or the desire to have prominence or power over others becomes their God. Now in Isaiah's day, the problem was trying to understand the significance and importance of God amidst all the gods of which they had heard or may have experienced from other people that weren't God's people. Isaiah's point is the captive Hebrews can put their faith in the coming deliverance from the Babylonians because their God is supremely more powerful than they or anything that they could come up with. Now in Isaiah 20, verse 25, Isaiah calls God the Holy One. The God of Israel was holy. He was steadfast. God is unchangeable. Holiness is a quality that belongs only to God. There is none like him, and he is separate from his creation. He is not a part of his creation. He is separate. Consider the beautiful words of the promise there in Isaiah 40, 29, verse 31. And many of you can probably quote these verses. But uh, God not only has power, in other words, he does not faint or grow weary, he also gives power. He gives power to the faint. When the circumstances of life become so overwhelming that we faint, God comes to us with his power. The Lord's strength is reserved for those who wait for him. And we don't like to wait these days. But think about that. The Lord's strength is reserved for those who will wait for him. Rather than those who like the young people mentioned in verse 30, depend upon their own strength. In other words, I'm going to do this. I can do this without the Lord. And we get that mindset, and it's the wrong mindset to have. People of faith do not always fly like eagles. God gives believers strength to walk as well as to soar at times. Have you ever noticed that uh, the order in verse 31 uh, where the prophet describes those that wait upon the Lord as flying and then running and then walking? One might expect the order to be in reverse. Well, first we walk, then we run, then we fly, but that's not what the scripture says. Um, most Christians from time to time will have ex will have spiritual experiences that cause us to feel as if we were literally flying. Other times we get excited about what is going on in our lives and we are running after Jesus. But most of us, and for most of the time, we are simply walking through life, plotting on a daily uh, basis, if you will, or plotting a daily way, going about. It is most likely in these times, the times we are walking or plotting, if you will, that we most, that we are in most need of God's strength. Whatever the circumstances that God is always, uh, excuse me, whatever the circumstances, God is always there. He's always willing to strengthen his people. The question is, are you calling on him? Think about this question. 
uh, after we've just talked about the verses 29 through 31. Do you remember the times when you have felt the need for the words of comfort and hope as, it, as the verses 29 through, 20, uh, 29 through 31 give us? Think about that, that you need to renew your strength. Think about those times and search the Lord as word and seek what he would have you to do in these times. Well, I hope this lesson was helpful to you. I hope it's been challenging to you. I certainly encourage you to go back and read uh, the whole chapter of Isaiah 40. And remember that we'll be here next week too um, for the first uh, lesson in November if you can believe that. But I want you to know that I pray that you experience the comfort and assurance knowing that God cares for you. And may you continue to feel the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ today and the days ahead.